Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Last day of this weekend and two days the next weekend. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Smelling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and this morning we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we do the usual disclaimers, all right? In the description box, you're going to see the link to the article that the JRC does not want you to read. It is written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics. It is an article in which they surveyed over 900 ABA professionals from all over the world in regards to the quote-unquote behavioral treatment program at the JRC. And in fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they would not remove it from their website. Neuroclastic has refused. So let's give them some traction on this article. Read it and share it on all your social media. We also have their public statement in regards to JRC's threat against them. And down at the bottom of the description box, we do have their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding for their legal fees just in case the JRC has the balls to see through their threat. Please share that also on all your social media, and if you can donate, we'd deeply appreciate it. You also got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Oya's massive archive on the subject of over three decades of receipts to what these bastards do at this godforsaken school. You also have the templates, which are incredibly important right now, JRC's lobbyists are working overtime, folks. They are earning their pay trying to get that ban removed from the current bill before it reaches the Senate. So please go to the templates, go to the rest of the website, get the phone numbers, all right? We also have the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we talk about the JRC, folks, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. Also, it is 7.36 a.m. in the morning. I am in autopilot. I am not here right now. B please leave a message beep, all right? So if I stumble over my words, apologies in advance, all right? Okay, so we're going to go to where we left off yesterday, 72. The June report claims that the use of skin scot conditioning devices at JRC raises health and safety concerns. Well, yes. Any device that is made in order to cause harm to hurt someone raises health and safety concerns. But let's see what kind of fucking weird pretzel logic we're going to have to deal with today, shall we? Fuck me. If the review team and NSAID is truly concerned for the health and well-being of the students at the JRC, these concerns should have been reported to the JRC immediately during April and May visits, and not two months later in a report dated to June the 12th. Really? Okay, do you see? What do you think these unannounced visits are exactly? Tell me. What do you think these visits are? These visits are organized. When a State Department has received numerous reports in regards to abuse and other concerns that have been brought up about a particular program. We can't just go running over there with no evidence, folks. That's my point. Raising concerns before we have gathered all the evidence and spoken with all the witnesses before we start conducting an unannounced investigation? Yeah, about that. There are laws and procedures that are put in place. They are slow moving, and it's fucking horrifying that they're slow moving. But yeah, as 
we like to say, none of this works the way the JRC wants or thinks it's supposed to work. Okay? Unannounced visits, unannounced investigations. When we show up and you don't know about it. It is due to the concerns about the health and safety of the students and the validity of your fucking program. Us being there unannounced should indicate that. It's hardly our fault, JRC, if you're too fucking stupid to realize it. Moving on. If inside visitors had done so, the JRC would have addressed any legitimate safety issues promptly or cleared any misunderstandings. Aha! Uh -huh. You see that there? You see what I'm meaning? They don't fucking actually care. They're not calling inside out. Not really. What they're doing is once again complaining about the fact that they didn't have the chance to manipulate the investigators to have them see what the JRC wanted them to see. Do not look at the man behind the curtain. You know what I mean? JRC continues to misunderstand what these unannounced visits are what their intentions are, what our goals are. They keep acting like they're the, some fucking victim being bullied by the rest of the world who just doesn't understand. And it falls on deaf ears if you just listen to their defenses. Anyone with two brain cells could pick this report apart the same as I have. They rant and rave. We weren't told. We weren't asked. Exactly. You're not told. You're not asked. By the time my ass and my team was in that particular program, that time is over with. We're not going to ask. We don't want you to clear anything up because... You may be lying to cover your ass. We want to see with our own eyes. Okay? Not the words coming out of your mouth. Not your bullshit paperwork, which we all know you have a history of fabricating and withholding at will. That's what these visits are, and they continue throughout the entirety of this report to try to misconstrue what these visits are. But moving on. JRC has issued GED and GED4 skin shock devices on hundreds of students over the last 17 years without any health or safety issues. Really? Explain the DESI reports. You had within a two-year period back in the 90s over five kids in the fucking ER. Doctors' visits, people losing sensation in limbs. They're lying to you, and they're doing it blatantly. In fact, by this time period, they're saying no health or safety issues when they were already under lawsuit by Andre McCollum's mother, Cheryl McCollum's. With the third degree burns all over Andre. Let's not discuss the 2006 here what caused these unannounced visits to start happening the lawsuit and the Desi reports that started coming out one right after the fucking other almost fucking daily. They're lying to you. And we've got the receipts. That's what that description box is there for. JRC's safe and effective use of the GED and GED4 devices is subject of judicial findings in hundreds of cases before the Massachusetts probate courts. It's not safe, JRC. And the judges 
are in no fucking place whatsoever to determine whether the fuck they're actually safe or the long-term damages or not. Doctors are. I've said it again. It is completely batshit insane that you have judges declaring that it's all right to use this fucking shock device on a child designed to hurt them. That is okay to deprive them of food, of sleep, of having staff jump out and threaten them, behavioral lesson or not. It is insane to any logical human being out there. You continue to throw the courts in our face like that is somehow going to make us believe, well, if the court says it's okay, You know the Court of Appeals exists for a reason, right? Because the courts aren't always right. For fuck's sake, JRC, you're from goddamn Massachusetts. If anybody should know that what the courts decide is not always right, it should be you. For God's sakes, have you seen your history? Have you seen your history? The hell is the matter with you? But the courts have found it safe. Have the courts sent independent investigators to inspect without your bullshit your treatment program? No, they haven't. Have they ever experienced the full power of a GED 3A shock or a GED 4? 15 and 4 to 5 MPH. No, they have not. Which makes your argument here completely, utterly invalid and useless. And I'm going to go ahead and close on this note. You don't get very many views on this channel. The few that you do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. Do appreciate your time this morning. As always, we here at Smelly Tea hope you have a good one. I'm going to go drink my calming tea and hopefully like, like block out the stupid I just read. Bye-bye, everyone.